mid-month 15th of september 2023 welcome to somalia's premier number one station for news and updates i'm a presenter abrahman yusuf tonight we have a couple of stories lined up for you but first let's take a look at the stories that are making our headlines car bomb kills two mps in somalia's muduk region girl muduk president escapes unharmed putlen accuses somali government of lacking proper strategy in military offensives el nino preparations take shape in somalia Glad to have you back. Now let's delve into our full bulletin. Gail Muduk president has escaped and scathed following a suicide car bomb rocked in the Muduk region, claiming the lives of several individuals and leaving many others wounded on Friday. Among the victims were two federal members of parliament uh, lawmakers whose injuries have sent shock waves throughout the nation. Here is a full story. Gelmuduk president has escaped and scathed following a suicide bomb rocked the Muduk region, claiming the lives of several individuals and leaving many others wounded on Friday. Among the victims were two federal Somali lawmakers whose injuries have sent shockwaves throughout the nation. The targeted site was a camp located in the strategic village of Lasgami, nestled between the districts of Wissil and Baadwain. The camp was hosting the esteemed Gelmuduk president, parliamentarians, and various government officials at the time of the deadly explosion. General Mohammed Noor Ali Qadar, the commander of the Galmuduk Dervish Army, confirmed the tragic loss of the life among the Galmuduk Presidential Guards and disclosed injuries sustained by other soldiers. Although Regional President Ahmed Abdi Kariye Korkor and other officials managed to escape unharmed, the blast wreaked havoc on the camp resulting in injuries caused by the destruction of the buildings. Senator Abdi Hassan Qaybdid, reportedly suffered an injury when a rock dislodged from a building wall where he was sleeping. Lawmaker Abdusalam Haji recounted the harrowing experience, revealing that the car bomb struck the very spot where he had rested the previous night. The member of parliament himself sustained a minor injury due to the collapse of the building. In a recorded video, Kalmuduk President Ahmed Abdi Kariye asserted that Al-Shabaab attack had failed, expressing confidence in the army's ability to achieve significant victories again as a group in the days to come. Over the past three weeks, President Ahmed Korkor, alongside Somalia's Defense Minister Abdelkader Mohamed Noor and other regional federal officials have been stationed at the front line in the Gilgadud region. This intensified presence has aimed to bolster the anti-Al-Shabaab operation in central Somalia. This latest attack follows a series of grim incidents. Earlier this week, Member of Parliament Mohamed Mohamed Ahmed, also known as Mohamed Yare, a prominent member of the Galmuduk Parliament and Abdullah Ibrahim Sha'ie, a member of the Dusomareb Local Council, lost their lives in a fatal lineman explosion in Al-Gadas town in the Gal-Gadud region. The lawmakers adventured to the town on Monday to visit troops who had recently recaptured the village from Al-Shabaab. For more than a decade, the Somali federal government, with the support of international partners and Africa Union forces, have been engaged in a protracted battle against the militant group Al-Shabaab. Although significant progress has been made with territorial gains, the militant group still exerts control over vast rural areas of the country, relentlessly perpetrating attacks not only in the capital city of Mogadishu, but also in other regions. Engineer Mahmoud Aidid Dirr, the Minister of Information in Portland, has leveled accusations against the Somali federal government asserting its lack of a well-executed strategy in combating the extremist group Al-Shabaab. In a strongly worded sentiment, uh, Dir expressed rather Dir expressed his belief that the government has failed to effectively deploy troops who receive training in Eritrea, despite their potential to overpower the militant group. Engineer Mohammed Aidid Dir, the Minister of Information in Portland, has leveled accusations against the Somali federal government, asserting its lack of well-executed strategy in combating the extremist group Al Shabaab. In a strongly worded statement, Dirr expressed his belief that the government has failed to effectively deploy troops who receive training in Eritrea, despite their potential to overpower the militant group. Additionally, the minister accused the federal government of neglecting its military, thereby enabling Al-Shabaab militants to kill soldiers in remote areas. Dirr has held President Shazan Sheikh Mahmoud and his administration responsible for the strategic failure against the militant forces. Furthermore, there has revealed that the federal government has withheld vital intelligence regarding Al-Shabaab from Portland, thereby compromising the security of the semi-autonomous region as militants evade operations in central Somalia and seek refuge there. 
Jerry has highlighted cases of Al Shabaab fighters successfully evading capture with their current whereabouts unknown. Somalia Disaster Management Agency Chairman Mohamed Mahalim Abdullah spearheaded a high level consultative meeting at the Somali Disaster Management Agency headquarters in Mogadishu to discuss emergency response to El Nino rains. The meeting brought together government officials, partner organizations, civil society, and women groups to address the global challenge of El Nino. Collective action and coordination among all actors were emphasized to effectively address its input. Somalia Disaster Management Agency Chairman Mahmoud Ma'alin Abdullah spearheaded a high level consultative meeting at its headquarters in Mogadishu to discuss emergency response to El Nino rains. The meeting brought together government officials, partner organizations, civil society, and women's groups to address the global challenge of El Nino. Collective action and coordination among all actors were emphasized to effectively address its impact. Participants actively shared valuable insights, innovative ideas, and suggestions on proactive disaster preparation and response. Education Minister Farah Abdul Qadir highlighted the vulnerability of education sector and assured comprehensive contingency plans and emergency education programs are being developed. Health Minister Dr. Ali Haji Aden stressed the importance of preparedness in the health sector expressing concerns about potential outbreaks of diseases. The ministry is strengthening surveillance and response systems, mobilizing resources, and collaborating with partners to provide adequate health services and supplies. The State Minister of the Prime Minister's Office, Hirsa Jama Ghani, emphasized the government's commitment to addressing the effects of El Nino rains. A national task force and coordination mechanism have been established, but increased support from international community and donors is needed. This consultative meeting is part of a series of ongoing consultations conducted by the Somali Disaster Management Agency to enhance Somalia's preparedness for El Nino disaster by fostering collaboration, sharing knowledge, and developing effective strategies to mitigate its impact. Lovely views that El Nino story brings us to the end of our bulletin. I wish to thank the Dalsa Media Fraternity for making this news bulletin a success. And you, our lovely viewer, thank you for staying put and watching us kindly. So, put for more stories in our subsequent bulletins.